Technology. <laughs> well, we're trying to get this to work. So, give me a give me a minute here. We are redoing the daily broadcast because we had some trouble with the previous one. I think it is related to something that's fixable, but I don't know if it is or not. So let's start over. I said I'd have a series of questions for you today or this week, one for each morning. And this morning's question is, how is your love for God's people? How is your love for God's people? Not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits aflame with righteousness did I understand the greatness and the genius of America. America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. This quote is often attributed to Alexis de Tocqueville, but the first print, the first example of it in print comes from Dwight Eisenhower, the 34th president of the United States. Let me read it to you again. Not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits aflame with righteousness did I understand the greatness and the genius of America. America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Well, this is your daily Elmira Baptist Church update for Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. And this is the second take on it. So if you had trouble with the first one, I hope that you're seeing this one clearly. Don't forget that we're taking a love offering for John Nordstrom. Several have already given, and I ask you to carefully consider, prayerfully consider, excuse me, prayerfully consider what God would have you to give. You can send that check in to the church, or if you give it online, please choose the missions option in that uh, appropriate box. And then you'll have to text me and let me know that that particular offering to missions is for John Nordstrom. Now, I want to keep you involved, and that's difficult with these virtual meetings. So this is what I mentioned yesterday and want to bring to your attention today. Tell us how God has blessed you during this time. There's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, you can send me an email at almirabc at icloud.com. Just write out your blessing from the Lord. You can also text me. Write out your uh, blessing from the Lord by text. And you have my number, it's, it should be on the screen there. But the best way would be to take your smartphone, take your cell phone, and uh, turn the camera around so it's a front-facing camera. If you've used FaceTime or Skype or some means like this and shown your picture to someone else, this is the feature you're using. And hit the record button on, on your, on your, on your uh, um, camera and record a video. 30 minute, second, not a 30 minute, please. 30 second to one minute video of your explanation of how God has blessed you during this stay-at-home order. Now, I, I don't want you to just talk about some new uh, routine you've developed that help, is helping you cope. I'm not talking about coping mechanisms. I'm talking about God actually pouring out his blessing on you during this time. If you would do that for me, you can take that video then and either email that to me or text that to me. If you get them to me by Friday, uh, Lord willing, I'll put together a collage of these uh, responses whether I have read them because you sent them to me as a text or email or whether it's a video of you personally sharing and I will post that to the church's Facebook page on Sunday giving you a chance, all of you a chance to hear how God has blessed us during this time. Now there are some problems that I've observed when we don't meet in one room, one location and uh, here are some of the things that are missing when we're not able to meet that way. Now, we still meet virtually, and uh, my family is there, my children, and we sing. But it's just not the same. The singing is not the same without all of you there. Five people and a pianist just don't raise the rafters like a hundred people and a piano player do. So I'm looking forward to being together again and singing those songs of praise to the Lord. We can't share our prayer requests. We can't share our praises in person. I especially miss those Sunday afternoons after the food and fellowship, when we give you an opportunity to just open up your heart and share your praises with us. 
Now this particular Sunday is the fourth Sunday of the month, and although we are not having a food and fellowship, I, I'm sorry, we can't meet in that manner right now, we can still share our praises, and I hope you'll take the opportunity to do that. So send those in. Again, elmirabc at icloud.com or text them to my phone. Now there is one good thing about preaching to a camera. I don't like preaching to a camera, but there is one positive, and I want to share that with you, and that is I cannot preach to an audience. I'm not preaching to you. I, I can't see your faces and see your responses and doesn't can't change my sermon. So when I'm preaching to that camera, really I'm preaching before God. That's all I have as an audience. So that's one positive thing about preaching to a camera, but I look forward to the day when you all are in front of me again on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, or a Wednesday night. Here are some prayer requests. I hope you're praying for the first responders, for our medical personnel who are on the front lines of this fight against the coronavirus. They are literally putting their lives on the line each day to be a, a wall of defense around each of us and I'm, I'm around us as a community and I'm thankful for them. Pray also for the Stevenson's daughter. Her name is Donna and for her three children. Uh, Donna and her children live in Tennessee and they have tested positive for the COVID-19 coronavirus. So WT and Diane have asked that we pray for them during this time. They're um, Donna's daughter, Caitlin, so this would be WT and Diane's granddaughter, Caitlin is particularly susceptible to respiratory uh, illnesses. So please pray for Donna, Caitlin, and the other two children. Our Bible study today comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. Let me read them to you as you follow along. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and and 25. I bet some of you could say them from memory. But let me read them to you. Hebrews 10, 24 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. This is the time when God tells us that we are to gather together. And as I mentioned last Wednesday night, we, are, we understand the seriousness and the severe outcomes for some people of catching this virus. And because we love our neighbor and because we want to protect one another, we have chosen to suspend our meetings at this time. The government did not grant us the right to meet, so the government can't take away our right to meet. But certainly we want to be good neighbors and we want to be good citizens in our republic. And so we are not meeting at this time. But I hope that's making you even more eager to meet again. Let me give you a personal story that I think illustrates this. When we lived in Mongolia, we did not have a water heater in our building or even in our apartment, in our homes. All the hot water for the entire district was supplied from a central location. So that was our local utility district that supplied our water and our hot water and our electricity. And that local utility district would turn off our hot water every summer in the month of August. They said they did it to clean the pipes. And they would turn off that hot water for anywhere from two to almost six weeks. The shortest period of time we had was about two weeks and the longest period was almost six weeks, six weeks without any hot water. Now you learn to make do. Uh, you boil water on the stove and, and different ways of heating up the water so that you had hot water to wash dishes, to bathe, uh, and, and for proper hygiene. But it was an added layer of complexity to our lives in the month of August. And I, you would turn on that hot water faucet each morning, hoping that instead of just cold water coming out, hot water would come out. And you'd always rejoice that first day that you turned on the hot water and instead of cold water coming out, hot water come out, came out, sometimes scalding hot water. And you'd wake up uh, your children, or I'd wake up Christy, and they'd say, hey, the hot water's back, and everyone can get showers again. And it just was an exciting time. And I sort of hope it's the same way when we can meet again as a church. Maybe we've taken it for granted. Maybe we haven't appreciated the opportunity to meet in person like we should have. Maybe it was a 
long Wednesday and you thought, ah, they're going to meet again next Wednesday. I'll go next Wednesday. Or you wake up Sunday morning and you just, just don't feel like going. They'll meet again next Sunday. Well, we've seen now that we're not always going to be able to meet. So I hope that that has given you a greater uh, motivation and desire to meet in person when we can again. There are still days, we haven't lived in Mongolia for eight years now. There are still days I turn on the hot water and hot water comes out and I say, thank you, Lord, for the hot water. Don't, I don't take it for granted anymore. And I hope that when we can meet again in person, that you won't take for granted. You won't take it just a given that we can meet. Now, the God of all peace, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. God is still in control. We'll meet again tomorrow.